Investing in Oil Wells 101, created by Norwood Energy Corporation. In this video, we will be discussing petroleum, the process of exploration and production project, example with John the investor, and benefits when involved with an EMP project. First, what is petroleum? Petroleum is rock oil. It includes crude oil, natural gas, and natural gas condensates. Petroleum is generally fluid and thus mobile. This makes exploring for it more complicated than exploration for a solid mineral like coral. Most oils and all gases are lighter than water, thus narrows the ranges of places to have petroleum. More on petroleum. Petroleum is our society's primary source of energy. Did you know in 2019, global demand for crude oil amounted to 100.1 million barrels per day? The United States consumed an average of about 20.5 million barrels of petroleum per day. Meanwhile, the total world oil production in 2019 averaged 80,622,000 barrels per day, with the U.S. being the number one producer with 15 million barrels a day. Next, we will discuss the process of an EMP project. In other words, the exploration and production of oil. First, we will go over the process of exploration, and then we will move over into the production side of an EMP project. First, where do oil companies go to look for oil? What do they look for? First, petroleum exploration involves two tasks, locating a sedimentary basin that contains source rock and also finding a trap in the basin in which might contain an oil or gas accumulation. When finding these traps in a basin, such as the Illinois Basin, for instance, uh, what oil companies do is they hire a geologist to locate these prospects using tools like the seismograph but ultimately, the geologist's most reliable information comes from wells previously drilled in the vicinity of their prospects. After an oil company finds a prospect, they will hire a lineman to acquire the right to drill for oil and gas on the land which overlies the prospect. Here is a recap of an EMP project so far. The oil company evaluates the geologist's prospect if they believe they can profit by drilling oil on a particular tract of land. The company's landman will negotiate with the mineral owners for the permission to drill a well. Before we get into the production side of the EMP project, I want to discuss the difference between the operator and the non-operators. Due to the high costs and the risk involved in drilling a well, the co-owners, also known as fractional working interest owners of a property, may join together in a single common effort, also known as a joint venture. The operator and the non-operators, they normally enter a joint operating agreement, also known as a JOA, under which one of the working interest owners is designated as the operator, and the other working interest owners are designated as the non-operators. Now we will go over the difference between a royalty interest versus the working interest in an EMP project. The royalty and working interest owners receive their share of monthly revenue from production according to the division order. Someone to have a royalty interest in an EMP project would be the landowner. People to have a working interest would be the operator and the non-operators. Next, we will discuss the production side of an EMP project. The stages of a well, DTC. First, we drill. Second, we test the oil. Third, we complete the well. Completion can cost the same amount as drilling the well. Drilling. What is needed to be done in order to drill? First, put the stake in the ground for the well location. Second, build a road leading to the well site. Clear and level the ground, a water source, transporting the rig, pipe, equipment to location. Then drilling fluid mud is prepared. When the oil company begins drilling, they must start by spudding and creating a borehole. After that is created, a large steel pipe is lowered into the borehole known as casing. Then the company will cement the casing to secure the casing to the walls of the borehole. After that, blowout preventers and safety equipment installed at the top of the casing. The blowout preventers are utilized to prevent any uncontrollable flow of oil, gas, or drilling fluid. Then the drill bit is attached and drilling proceeds. As the drill bit cuts the borehole about 30 feet deeper, additional pipe is added to the pipe already in the ground. 
What goes into the cost of drilling? First, the depth of the well, how deep we're going, the time it takes to drill the well, and the acreage cost that you're drilling in. The drilling cost falls into two categories. First, the equipment, which is tangible, and then the intangible drilling and development cost, which is also known as IDC, which consists of wages, repairs, and hauling, plus consumables such as fuel, water, drill bits, and mud used in the drilling of wells. When drilling the well is completed, you test the oil to make sure you can sell the oil. After that is done, uh, you complete the well. The well then will go into production. For a commercial well, life of well may last anywhere between three to 50 years, as long as it's economically feasible. Also, a commercial well can typically produce anywhere from 30 barrels a day to upwards to 1,500 barrels a day. Once the well is completed, next is selling the oil. Oil is sold by the barrel. There's 42 gallons in a barrel. Now let's go over an example. Norwood Energy has a prospect they want to drill. They had a successful test well with an ROI within four months of sales in the same area. Norwood Energy wants to drill similar wells in the same fashion and bring investors on board to be part of it and share their wealth. John decides to invest in Norwood Energy and own a working interest in their EMP project. Example continued, if Norwood Energy drilled a well that cost $1 million, the well produced 300 barrels a day for the month of X, a barrel of oil costs $45 at this time. 300 barrels times the 30 days in the month equals 9,000 barrels produced during the month. At $45 per barrel times the 9,000 barrels equals $405,000 in sales for the month of X. Example continued. If John had a working interest of 1% in the well, that would cost him $10,000. There is a 15% landowner royalty with an additional 8% in expenses, which means there is a 77% NRI for John, the working interest owner. Then we will do the revenue times the NRI. It will come out to $344,250. You include the expenses. That comes out to $27,540. Subtract that from the NRI, and that will come out to $316,710 for the net revenue. So you'll do John's 1% working interest times the net revenue, and then you'll see that John will be receiving a $3,167.10 from month of X production. Example continued. Based off of John's first monthly revenue check, John should expect a return on investment under four months from when the well was put in sales. With the average life of a well ranging anywhere from three years to 15 plus years, depending on the decline, John would expect to see a five time multiple on his ROI after the first three to six years with $45 oil. Benefits of investing in oil wells. Tax shelters that no other industry offers, potential for substantial monthly income, potential buyout or IPO. Our record ROI stands at four months and our last buyout resulted in a 594% return. If you would like to learn more about this kind of opportunity, please feel free to contact us to directly benefit from owning interest in our oil and gas wells. We would like to welcome you to our family of investors.